Okay, thanks so much everyone for attending today's webinar, our uh, next in our Lunch and Learn series. Uh, today's webinar, as you see, is gonna be about uh, an overview of laws pro prohibiting employment discrimination based on disability by our interim executive director, Ronald Aspinato. Um, we do these Lunch and Learn sessions. We try to do them about once a month. We've had a, a, a few this month, so it's been a bonus month. Um, look for them on our website. We're continuing to post them as get them uh, uh, get everything together and make sure we have uh, all the accessibility features uh, included in the videos. So speaking of which, I want to thank Janice King, New Orleans Sign Language Services for providing ASL interpretation today. Uh, please let me know in the chat box if you have any issues accessing this presentation and we'll continue to work on improving our, our presentations. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, type them in the Q&A box and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. So uh, thanks again for coming out. Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. I'll turn it over to you, Ron. Great. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so today we're going to be talking about, as the, as the um, first first um, slide indicates, um, employment discrimination based on disability. Um, you can turn this, move the slide. So uh, there are approximately 54 million um, Americans that have at least one disability, um, making disability the largest minority group in the nation. Um, due to wars and aging population, this number is expected to double within the next um, 20 years. Um, in addition to the 54 million Americans with disabilities, at least 133 million Americans live with a chronic health condition. Um, um, and the main barrier that people face isn't just physical access. I mean, it, certainly there is some of that, but attitudes and stereotypes held by others are uh, a major problem. Uh, next slide. Um, the ADA is a broad mandate of comprehensive character and sweeping purpose intended to eliminate discrimination against disabled individuals and to integrate them into the economic and social mainstream of American life. Um, and today's presentation is going to focus on the economic, um, although we also are going to allude to mention um, the um, social mainstream of our American life. But, um, to effectuate its um, purpose, the ADA forbids discrimination against um, individuals with disabilities in major areas of public life, among them employment, um, which is covered mainly by Title I of the um, ADA, although it is also covered by Title II, which covers public services or state and local governments. And, um, and then Title III of the ADA covers public accommodations. We won't be talking about them so much today, but um, we're focused on, mainly on Title I to, some to, to a smaller degree on Title II. Next. Um, the ADA was signed into law in 1990. Um, so it's been around for a while now, um, over 30 years, and amended in 2008 to provide broad protections to persons with disabilities. Um, the intent of the ADA is to remove barriers that would prevent qualified individuals with disabilities from accessing the same opportunities afforded to a person without a disability. In this session, we'll be focusing on the employment section of the ADA, which protects individuals from discrimination based on disability, perceived disability, or association with another individual who has a disability. Um, it also requires employers to provide reasonable accommodations to qualified individuals with a disability to allow the person to perform the essential functions of his or her job and restricts unnecessary disability related inquiries. And we'll get to that. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. Next. Um, initially, if a, a person has an ADA claim um, of, of employment discrimination, they're required to file um, with the EEOC or the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Um, in Louisiana, um, because we also have a state law against discrimination and a place for filing such claims, um, an aggrieved individual um, must file a formal workplace discrimination charge within 300 days of the alleged discrimination to trigger EEOC enforcement. Um, put another way, if you don't file within 300 days, you're gonna lose any ability to to um, to um, remedy that discrimination under federal law, at least. Um, 
you are not allowed to file a lawsuit in federal court until you have a right to right uh, right to sue notice um, from um, um, from the EEOC. Um, and usually you must give the EEOC up to 180 days to resolve your complaint. So some cases can be resolved at that administrative level, although you can ask for a notice to, notice of a right to sue letter um, earlier. Um, if EEOC is unable to determine your, your, um, that your employer violated the law, you'll be sent a um, right to sue notice. Next. Um, in addition to the ADA, um, uh, there's an, another federal law that um, prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability, and that's Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. That applies mainly to recipients of, well, it applies exclusively to recipients of federal funding. It, um, 504 provides that no qualified individual with a disability shall, by reason of their his or her disability be excluded from participation and be not denied the benefits of or subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Um, the, um, the Section 504 can be a really important provision for many individuals. Um, for one thing, it has a one year statute of limitations and doesn't require you to go through the EEOC first. Um, so it's a little, you have a little more time to file um, in those cases. Um, um, and it's construed pretty similarly to the way the ADA is applied. Um, um, in fact, Congress expl was explicit in saying that nothing in the ADA shall be construed to apply a lesser standard than the standards applied under Title, Title V or Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act or the regulations issued by the federal agencies pursuant to that title. So, um, so both are important federal remedies that, um, um, that people have when they feel they've been discriminated on the basis of disability and employment. Next. The remedies under 504 um, may in some instances be broader than the remedies that are available under, under, the, a, under the ADA. Um, for example, um, under, um, under federal law, um, you can't sue the state for money damages under the ADA. Um, your, um, the Supreme Court has held that the 11th Amendment bars such suit, the 11th Amendment to the United States Constitution bars those cases. Um, but Section 504 is in, in a different position because states ag agree essentially to um, not discriminate when they take federal money. So they, they are held to a higher standard in some ways. And so damages can be available against the state um, if, if they receive federal financial assistance. Um, punitive damages are not available, but other kinds of damages are, including back pay and other kinds of compensatory damages. Next. Um, Louisiana law against <laughs> disability discrimination. Um, anyway, um, Louisiana law also covers it. It makes it illegal for an employer to discriminate on the basis of, among other things, disability. Um, it also, um, in order to um, uh, file a claim or um, part of the process is you can file a complaint with a state administrative agency, in this case, the Louisiana Commission on Human Rights. Um, you can also file it with the EEOC, um, so the because the two agencies have a um, work sharing agreement, which means that uh, the agencies cooperate with each other in the, in the processing of claims. Um, again, that's um, that's important to know. But if you're going to protect your rights to file your federal claim, you need to file it with the EEOC. Um, uh, Generally, that would be a, that would be preferable. Although, again, you, you can file you can file even your federal claim with the the um, Louisiana Commission on Human Rights. They'll just simply refer it to the Fed, the Fed EOC. Um, so um, now, unlike the federal anti discrimination law, um, filing with the um, um, Human Rights Commission is not uh, necessary to pursue a discrimination claim directly in court. Um, but again, if you're going going to raise a federal claim, then you need to go to court first. I mean, you need to go to the EEOC first or the um, Commission on Human Rights. Next. 
Um, who is covered by the ADA? Um, the ADA applies to employers with 15 or more employees. Title II of the ADA applies to all state and local governments. As I mentioned before, Section 504 applies um, to programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance. Um, the employment provisions of Louisiana's anti-discrimination law applies to employers of 20 or more employees, um, and in some cases, uh, 25 or more. Next. A person with a disability, um, there um, can be one of three things. It's a person who has a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits a major life activity without regard to mitigating measures. For example, somebody who has diabetes that's controlled by diet and lifestyle may still have a substantially limiting impairment given the severity of the impairment, impairment when not under control. They have to have a record of such a, they can have a record of such impairments. So regardless of whether somebody has the impairment, if they're, if the records show they do and people are discriminated on the basis of that record, then they also have the ADA protects them. Um, and it also protects people who have been, as, as I say, mis misclassified or misdiagnosed as having a, a disability. Um, regarded as having an impairment. So regard, again, regardless of whether somebody actually has an impairment, if they're treated like they have an impairment, they also have a claim. So it, it would be illegal under the ADA to refuse to hire someone um, um, if the employer believes the person has cancer, even if the ap ap applicant does not actually have cancer. Next. Um, some examples of qualifying conditions are um, autism, cancer, diabetes, deafness, blindness, cerebral palsy, post-traumatic stress disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, partially or completely missing limbs, mobility impairments requiring the use of a wheelchair, intellectual disability, epilepsy, HIV, bipolar disorder, major depression, multiple sclerosis, multiple muscular dystrophy. So it's a pretty um, broad range of, of disabilities that are recovered. Um, and, um, um, and other disabilities, again, would be covered as long as they um, substantially limit um, a person's abilities um, to function. Next. So what, what are employees' rights under the ADA and Section 504? Um, First of all, an individual doesn't have to disclose a disability unless they request a reasonable accommodation. Obviously, if you request a reasonable accommodation, you're going to you're asking that the employer recognize the disability. Um, so, uh, disclosure is a necessary predicate. Um, they have a right to have a reasonable accommodation at the employer's expense. They have a right to be involved in an interactive process to determine the effective uh, accommodation. Um, they have um, um, they have a right to have their non-essential functions of the job reassigned if necessary. Um, that would be a part of a reasonable accommodation. They have confidentiality of their medical conditions, and they need to be free from discrimination or harassment, or for that matter, retaliation. Next. The employer also has um, some protections. Um, they um, they have a right to receive medical dos documentation of a disability if a person needs an accommodation. They get to participate in the decision about what is an effective accommodation. Typically, um, the employer and the way courts deal with it, the, the employer is going to get to choose if there are two equally effective accommodations, but they both have to be effective. So um, an employer can't choose an ineffective accommodation because it's cheaper. Um, it, it still has to be um, effective. To require an employee, um, they can require an employee to meet production standards. In other words, a person has to be able to do the essential functions of the job. Um, they can refuse accommodations that are undue hardships involving significant difficulty or expense. Again, the accommodation has to be reasonable. Um, so an undue hardship, something that caused an undue hardship would not necessarily, um, would not be something that an employee is entitled to. Um, 
they can refuse to hire or accommodate a person who is a direct threat to the health and safety of themselves or others. And lastly, employees have to be qualified to perform, as I mentioned, the essential functions of the job with or without a reasonable accommodation. Next. Um, a qualified individual with a disability um, is someone who can meet the skill, experience, and education requirements of the position and can perform the essential functions of the basic duties of the job with or without a reasonable accommodation. So somebody has to be a qualified individual with a disability to qualify under the, under the ADA. Um, sorry about that. Um, Thus, if a person is not is not qualified for the position, um, despite having um, a disability, um, um, they're not um, entitled to a reasonable accommodation, and um, and the ADA does not require the employer to is not re, does not require the employer to hire or retain that individual, um, even if the person's inability to do the job is caused by his or her disability. Um, at the heart of the ADA is the requirement to provide a reasonable accommodation as these accommodations are designed to help level the playing field so that individuals with a disability has equal access and opportunity to succeed in the job. Next. Um, now, again, the purpose of the reasonable accommodation is not to provide an advantage, but to make uh, to basically to level the playing field, to provide an opportunity for uh, success equal to someone who does not have a disability. Um, a reasonable accommodation is any modification or adjustment to a job, practice, policy, or work environment that allows the individual to participate equally in the employment. Approximately 50% of reasonable accommodations, uh, reasonable accommodations cost absolutely nothing. The vast majority of other reasonable accommodations have a limited one-time cost of a, on the average of about 600 bucks. Um, examples of accommodations include, but they're not limited to, making existing facilities accessible, modifying a work schedule, altering training materials, test or policy, acquiring and modifying uh, equipment, providing an interpreter, restructuring a job, leave without pay, reassignment to a vacant position. Next. Again, um, go, um, back. Again, the ADA, ADA requires employers to provide accommodations to qualified individuals. This means reasonable accommodations, not all accommodations. Effective accommodations, not an employee's employ, uh, preferred accommodations. And again, accommodations must not impose that and do hardship. Um, 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 and um, part of the, the assessment is, is how disruptive or expensive an accommodation might be. An employee's re re responsibility is to, is to make a request for a reasonable accommodation, but there's no magic words. Uh, and um, if the circumstances are such that the employee should reasonably know the person needs an accommodation, they're going to be held accountable for that. So um, the key is that the employee indicates he is having difficulty at work because of some kind of medical condition. And if the employer knows that, then they have an obligation to, um, to discuss reasonable accommodations with the employee. Next. <clears throat> So um, to help determine what a reasonable accommodation is, the, employee, the EEOC recommends that employers use the interactive process. Um, some courts have described this as a, as, a, as a mandatory requirement, but generally EEOC takes the position that it's not required under the ADA. Um, but um, going through, you know, from a legal standpoint, the, um, it's one way of an employer to show that they are making a good faith effort to comply with the ADA. Um, and as a, from a practical point of view, it is also a way to streamline the accommodation process and help ensure the effective accommodations are provided. Next. Steps in the interactive process. Essentially, these are, these are the basic steps. Um, first, you have to recognize an accommodation request. 
to gather information necessary to determine what is a reasonable accommodation. Explore the accommodation options. Um, choose an accommodation. Implement the accommodation, and then make sure that the accommodation is working by mo by monitoring it. So, um, it's a it is definitely a process, <clears throat> and it's not a one step process. It's not even a one time process. And once an accommodation is chosen, um, there may be ways to there may be a need to re uh, renegotiate that at a later point in time if it's not working, um, or the employer's needs change. So, um, it is a it is a process. Next. So what should an employee do if they're feeling like they're being discriminated against on the basis of their disability? Um, the best the suggestion that I would have is, is keep a calendar, a notebook, a computer file, a record of any, any time you feel you've been treated un, unfairly. Note the time, the date, where you, were, um, where you were when you were treated unfairly. Write down the, the names of all the people who were there. Write down everything that happened. Um, if quotes are necessary, put in quotes. Um, note if anybody overheard or saw what happened. So if you believe there are witnesses, you know, keep a note of that. And make sure you um, that you talk to those witnesses. Make sure they agree with your perspective before enlisting them um, to be a witness in your complaint. In other words, make sure that they're going to help you, not hurt you. Next. Um, so keep a record of all the papers you um, you receive from those involved, such as notes, handwritten or typed, policies and procedures, memos or letters, reports or evaluation, files, emails. Um, those can come in pretty handy if you file an EEOC complaint because they're going to EEOC is going to want to look at them, and if you go to court, the court's going to want to see that kind of material. Next. Um, in Louisiana, you don't actually have a right to um, view your own file unless the employee handbook or a collective bargaining agreement specifically grants that right. Um, um, but if you do have that right, that's, and, um, and regardless of whether you have that right, uh, uh, certainly no harm in asking. And certainly, if you have that right, you should, you should if you feel like you're being discriminated against, you certainly should request to see your file. Um, if you're worried about something a coworker or a supervisor did, or if you want to be considered for a promotion or a new job that is open, put it in writing. Um, send it to the appropriate person. Ask for a response. And if you want proof that the letter was received, consider um, sending it your letter by certified mail. Next. Again, the, um, the core of the um, um, ADA is to ensure economic um, quality of opportunity, full participation, independent living, and economic self-sufficiency. Um, so um, one area where the, where Title II of the ADA applies um, is, again, state and local governments and um, on in programs that provide employment training. Um, those employ, employment trainings um, are covered by the ADA. Um, and um, and if they if these programs are unnecessarily segregated, um, then they could be held liable under the ADA. So program so um, so basically services being provided to persons with disabilities should be in integrated employment, vocational, and other settings. Next. Um, so it, so this, this integration mandate requires public entities to administer services, programs, and activities in the most integrated setting appropriate to the needs of the individual. Um, accordingly, public entities must reasonably modify their policies, procedures, and practice with, to avoid unnecessary discrimination. Um, unless that the, the entity can demonstrate that making the modifications would fundamentally alter the nature of the service, program, or activity. Um, finally, the integration mandate is implicated when a state or local government administers the services, programs, and activities of its um, employment service system in a manner that results in unjustified segregation of persons with disabilities in segregated employment settings. Um, I raise the issue of, the, of Title II because it's not strictly in a, a um, disability and employment situation, but but um, the failure to provide integrated service certainly 
something that is a barrier to many individuals um, finding and obtaining um, employment um, that um, that they can uh, engage in, which can provide a meaningful income to them. So um, it's a really important aspect of the ADA. Finally, any questions from anybody? I'd be happy to um, take them if we have some time. Yeah, I don't see any questions in the Q&A right now, but if you have any at the last minute, uh, please type them and we'll uh, get to them as we finish up. Um, but I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Thanks again, Janice King, New Orleans Sign Language Services for providing ASL interpretation. Um, stay tuned to our website, disabilityrightsla.org for more news of future webinars like this one. And we're going to post uh, the ones that we've already done and, and get them online and follow us on social media and we'll announce when we do and uh, give other news and links and information from our partner agencies, uh, things that you might find helpful. So once again, thanks so much. Thanks to uh, our interim executive director, Ronald Aspinato, for this presentation. Uh, again, we'll get this put up as soon as we can and uh, hope to see you around soon. Thanks a lot. Take care. No questions, I take it. Yeah, no questions. Okay, great. Take care. Thanks, everybody.